Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com, ElectronicLessons.com, and PaintballProps.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about the multi-program laser tripwire set currently on Kickstarter. Uh, it's got four different programs. I'm going to show you how to work each of those programs. There are two tripwire modes, a uh, shadow mode and a gesture mode. Now if you stay with me, uh, I'll go through each, each of them in depth, how to select them, how to manipulate them, and I'll also talk about the laser. The 5 milliwatt laser module that's also being uh, offered in some rewards of my Kickstarter. Uh, it's a perfectly legal laser to ship and uh, import. And we've also got some rewards with a, an adjustable stand that allows for you to adjust several axes to easily aim your laser at one of the four receivers on the uh, processor board. In addition to that, we've also got a 3 volt regulator board that takes between 4 and 15 volts DC, any voltage in between and converts it to a safe 3 volts for the laser. It's also got an on-off switch right here. I've got this unit plugged into the wall via a 120 to 240 volts AC down to 9 volts DC at 1 amp. However, this laser only requires about 25 milliamps at any given point. So in this, as well, what's neat about the laser is you can actually focus the laser by uh, twisting the top gently. We'll get to the laser a little bit later. In any case, let's talk about the first uh, program. The siren, which is included in many reward tiers, has two mounting holes and a double-sided tape strip on the back underneath, which allows for me to stick it to this canvas. This canvas I've used because it's easy to hang on a wall, and the siren can be mounted far away if you'd like. It's got a long wire, uh, but it connects directly into this little connector right here, plugs in nicely, and also the power connector on the bottom allows for you to easily plug in a uh, 9 volt 1 amp adapter and it's as easy as that we're powered up now on the uh, right here sorry we're in uh, right now we are in uh, gesture mode ignore the LEDs uh, right here is our program select header there are eight pins and you select between program 1 program 2 program 3 and program 4 it's labeled on the PCB the LEDs can be enabled and disabled at any point by removing the LED enable jumper but I prefer to keep that jumper on because it is a good indicator. This output header allows for you to connect to Arduino uh, or other TTL based circuits. The output is 5, five volts compatible but again we'll get to that a little bit later. We're going to start off with the laser tripwire mode. Uh, to tell you what the programs are on the program select header here on the upper left you can see that program 1 is gesture mode, program 2 is shadow mode, program 3 is laser tripwire 1 mode and program 4 is laser tripwire 2 mode. So because I think that laser tripwire 2 mode is the most dynamic we're going we're to start with program 4. In program 4 laser tripwire 2 the neat thing is is that we've got two sub options, two sub code options. We've got timer mode and non-timer mode. In order to select timer mode take a two pin header that's included with the rewards and uh, connect the right two pins of this three pin header and power it up. Now at this point we can shine not one laser, not two laser, not three lasers, but four lasers up to. You don't need to, you can use one. We're actually going to use one for this video. But you can shine up to four different lasers on these four sensors to make a rather large laser grid. Bounce them all off mirrors. It's a, it's a lot of fun. But we're going to use one for the demonstration. We're going to use the left one. We'll get to that in just a second. But in timer mode, what happens is as soon as the laser is breached, what happens is the LED indicator will blink for uh, roughly six seconds and then the alarm will go off. During that time you can press the cell button to deactivate it. In non-timer mode what we do is we power it up with the jumper on the left two pins and that means as soon as a laser uh, a laser breach occurs the alarm will go off. And when the, and the alarm goes off it goes off for a minimum of five seconds during which time the indicator LED right here will turn on. Once that turns off after five seconds you can deactivate it by pressing the cell button. Now I'm actually implementing for the Kickstarter wireless control that will allow for you to wirelessly activate and deactivate the board. And uh, I'm adding a little receiver right here and the transmitter will be a key fob. But I'll get to that when I actually get my new PCBs in. So right now we are in timer mode. So in timer mode what we're going to do is I'm going to take my laser and I'm going to shine it at uh, the, left, the left receiver. 
and uh, again I can have up to four lasers what we're what it's searching for at a very high frequency is a change in light so it's very very sensitive a very quick change in light will cause the system to be activated so let me shine my laser on the left sensor and we'll power it up so I've got my laser pointed at the left sensor it's powered up in timer mode nothing happens because I haven't activated yet uh, whether or not you choose wireless control, you can still always use the cell button to activate it. Now watch the upper right LEDs. It scrolls from left to right. And that tells me that we are now activated. It is now scanning and waiting for a change in light. So if I quickly break the sensor, I'm going to cover this iron. Now what you might have noticed, and watch for it this t next time, is that the indicator LED lit up for five seconds, roughly five seconds, and then turned off. Only when that LED turns off can you turn off the siren, and that's to ensure that the siren is on for a minimum amount of time to actually alert somebody. So what happens if I activate it, breach the sensor, or breach the laser beam, and I press the cell? It deactivates. So in timer mode, it gives you some time to run up to, this, to the board and deactivate it. Again, I'll, I'll reactivate it, breach the sensor, I'll deactivate it. You have to hold the button down until it scrolls. One more time, activate, breach the laser, hold down the cell button, let go. And so that is uh, timer mode. So let's power our unit down and we'll switch the header from the right pins to the left pins. I've made that change, I've repowered the board up, I press the cell button, and again, you can do this wirelessly, you'll have that option with the Kickstarter, uh, I have redesigned the board to give you the option of adding wireless control, in this case, we don't have wireless control. Uh, so press the cell button, uh, the LED showed me that the board is activated, I'm going to put my hand over the siren because it's really loud, and I'm going to breach the sensor. Did you see the LED? So just to show you one more time, when that LED is on after breach and the siren's going off, I can't turn it off until that LED turns off. So I'm going to cover my, ha my hand over the siren, press the cell button again, activate the system, breach the laser. So only when that LED turned off can I, can I, uh, can I turn the system off. I'm going to try it one more time because that wasn't a great example. And there you go. So that's laser tripwire mode um, 2. And that's easily the most dynamic, in my opinion, because you can have up to four different lasers, uh, and it's only active when you've specifically uh, activated, deactivated it. So there are two modes. There's timer mode. There's non-timer mode. Now let's, uh, let's talk about laser tripwire one mode. What I've done is I have added the jumper to the program two header, and I've got the uh, select jumper for the subprogram jumper set to the rightmost pins and in this mode there's two options uh, using this light sensor and the bottom light sensor or just the bottom light sensor when I have the subprogram select set to the rightmost pins then I'm only using the bottom sensor it's the only sensor that's active the top one is not doing anything so in this mode as soon as you power it up what happens is, as soon as I break the laser beam, the siren goes off for as long as you breach the laser. And as soon as the laser beam reenacts, or sorry, retouches the sensor, the alarm stops. So I'll do it again. It's very loud. I'm going to cover the siren. Now, if I power it up with the uh, select jumper on the leftmost pins, what happens is the top and bottom sensors are enabled. So if you have two lasers, shine one at the bottom, shine one on the top, and you have this option. If either laser beams are broken, the siren will go off for as long as those, the, those lasers are breached. It's a much simpler mode, and only two light-dependent resistors, the bottom and the top, are, use, are used, but... Uh, in this mode only, it detects uh, 
it's the the circuitry is a little bit different for the top and bottom sensors, which allow for you to only use two sensors for this mode. But uh, again, this is a secondary mode. This is not as as dynamic as I would consider the uh, program for Laser Tripwire 2 to be. This one is <clears throat> just as sensitive, but again, the siren only stays on for as long as you breach the laser. So if I had another laser pointed at the top uh, light dependent resistor, powered it off, and took my jumper and placed it on the middle and left pins, powered it up, I would, uh, I would obviously want my lasers pointed at the top and bottom laser before I powered it up, or else the siren would scare the crap out of me. Uh, but yeah, that is Laser Tripwire 1 mode, Program 3. Now let's talk about let's talk about Shadow mode, which is Program 2. This is where your Arduino comes into play. The upper rail here uh, has six pins, a regulated 5 volts, labeled VCC, ground, so you can connect your circuit externally to another circuit, such as an Arduino Uno, and uh, left, up, down, and right, which correspond to left, down, up, and right sensors. So in shadow mode, we don't cons we don't we're not worried about up, down, left, and right. We're just worried about the board on the whole. So if I power it up in shadow mode with the subprogram select connecting the uh, middle and right pins, power it up, and if any of the sensors detects a, a quick change in light. The rightmost LED and the right output will go high for a very short duration, for about 250 milliseconds. And this is to communicate with your Arduino or your external circuit uh, and tell it that a, a shadow has been detected over the board. It can happen over any sensor or all sensors. It's very sensitive. So, what happens if I power it down? and take my sub-program select jumper and place it over the middle and left pins. And I power it up. It toggles. This is the toggle mode. So one detection in light has caused the right LED to turn on, the right output to go to 5 volts. Another one, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So this is the most simple mode, but you have the option of a momentary output, 250 milliseconds, or toggle mode. And it's just that simple. Just change the uh, jumper. It's detecting a change in light. Uh, let's go on to program, uh, program 1, the final mode. This is gesture mode, and this is where all three of the, all four of the indicator LEDs and all four outputs come into play. This is your Arduino Haven right here. This is the only mode without a sub mode. In this mode, it doesn't matter which, uh, whether you have the uh, sub program jumper connecting the left pins or the right pins. In this mode, there's only one function, but it's actually really neat. Uh, so if I breach the left sensor cast a shadow over it, detects a change in light. The left LED turns on, and the left LED uh, output turns on, labeled L. The bottom. The bottom output and the bottom LED turns on for a short period of time, roughly 200 milliseconds. The top and the right. So it's very simple, and I've written a an Arduino code that's going to be included with the uh, the user manual for those of you who pledge towards the Kickstarter, and uh, and I'm going to try to uh, write a few different codes, but that's one I've already written. It just opens a serial monitor and tells you which sensor has detected a change in light. Now you can still use lasers in this mode if you'd like, but the siren is not used in this mode or in shadow mode. This is a specifically Arduino slash TTL compatible mode that allows for you to easily connect your board to an external circuit. So again, there are four LEDs uh, that correspond to the four outputs labeled L, U, D, and R. And so it'll tell you. If you have, say you have, uh, in this mode it would be interesting just to write a code that says, okay, while you are gone, uh, your, laser, uh, your laser grid that corresponds to the left sensor 
has been has been breached or the bottom or the right or the top or you can simply use it just with your hand to create a gesture mode it's that simple so let's have a quick look at connecting this to an Arduino in gesture mode you can take your uh, Arduino Uno or you can spice it up with an ICU Duino our past Kickstarter campaign found at engineeringshock.com and you can easily interface for this experiment now I'm going to upload the code to my Arduino with my ICU Duino Arduino shield which is completely unnecessary here but I figured I'd add it in just for fun and we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, test out the code I've uploaded the code and all I have to do is go to my serial monitor and hopefully you can see this, I'll breach the left sensor left sensor has detected movement lower sensor has detected movement upper sensor has detected movement and let me get to the other side of the camera right sensor has detected movement now this code is just a starting point you can do a heck of a lot with this but I just wanted to write a very very simple code uh, that that you can use as a starting point with gesture mode in any case that is the preliminary manual when I have the new PCBs with wireless control I will be uh, creating a separate video for that but I just wanted to share this with uh, with my pledges, potential pledges, and uh, just all of you guys. So thanks for watching. I sincerely appreciate it. It's a very easy to use board. It's a lot of fun, easily customizable, has some neat peripherals, and uh, yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. The lasers. Some rewards come with all of this. Some rewards come with four sets of this. And uh, some rewards come with none of this. But what we've got here is an adjustable laser mount uh, that's adjustable on many different axes. Uh, easily tightened using the tightening hardware that's included. It also comes with the uh, mounting hardware. There's three mounting holes. You can mount it to a surface very easily, even to a wall if you'd like. The laser can be removed at any point. Uh, tighten using these two, these two screws. And the beam can be focused by gently twisting the head here. Now, when you have it lined up with the target, the more focused the beam is, the smaller the dot will be, but uh, the farther the beam will go. And you can bounce it off more mirrors that way, if you, want to, if you want to be bouncing enough mirrors. If you want to defocus it slightly, the beam head when it hits the surface will be a little bit larger and easy to mount, easy to align up with your sensors, but it won't reach as far. The regulator board, and again we'll be selling this, or rather uh, there are rewards for DIY versions, and I'll be making an assembly video for both the regulator board and the processor board. The regulator board takes between 4 and 15 volts DC and regulates it to a solid 3 volts. There's filtering on the input and output, and it's got an on-off switch. You can turn the laser on and off, and you can plug it into the wall. Now you don't have to plug into the wall, but you can uh, you can place uh, a 9 volt battery, say, on the input if you'd like, or even a uh, two AA batteries, or not two A's because that's 3 volts, uh, four AAs in series to the input if you'd like. As well, the inputs and outputs, you don't have to use the terminal blocks which uh, uh, enable, allow for you to screw the ter your, your connections in, but you can actually solder the inputs and outputs to the board. So uh, if you want it f for a long-term thing and you don't want to remove the regulator board, you want it to be solid, you want to solder them into place, you have that option. Uh, check out the Kickstarter Thanks for watching. Uh, to the pledges, thank you, to my pledges that have already made pledges. Thanks for uh, thanks for pledging and believing in this project. I really appreciate it. The Kickstarter's link below. Take care, guys, and thanks again.